Welcome back to the back half of the final round of the BlackBerry Amateur Championship coverage uh, by CRDG Productions. This is Evan Allison and Christian Riley. We are back here in the studio for this final 10 holes here at BlackBerry Disc Golf Course. We're able to watch our card uh, really kind of feast on that beginning half of this round. You know, Jackson making a streak of going six birdies through seven holes. Uh, you know, a lot of really good scores being put up. The back half is where this course really starts to show its teeth. Uh, especially right here on this hole that you're looking at, hole 21 has a huge potential swing factor as you come down this stretch. Ton of danger on it. Uh, but yeah, you just got to try to hold on to the strokes you've gotten and don't let them slip back up. So we're gonna we're gonna continue our coverage starting with hole 12. This is from the top of the water tower above Shawnee Lodge. So yeah, this is the highest point in the park and on the course. So once you're here, everything is figuratively and literally downhill from here. <laughs> uh, you know, you don't have to climb any more hills. It's all a coast back down to the parking lot. Uh, but this right here plays along a ridge, so it has a big downslope on the left and right, as well as long of the basket. So a lot of uh, potential for rollaways, uh, disc sailing a little further past where you want, kicks down a hill, uh, and anything and everything in between. A lot can happen if you don't get off the tee clean. That's traditionally the shot you're going to see from most people is their shot's going to hyzer out to the left of the basket and uh, try and throw up from right there around circle's edge off of that left side. Yeah, staying up on this ridge and in the fairway is really, really difficult. <laughs> Gravity seems to work a little extra up here, just as you're seeing there. It's complete it, opposite of Evan's first shot there. Yeah, but if you're in the air starting over the ridge you're just going to keep sailing until something hits you and stops you because it seems the ground slopes away just as fast as your disc has fallen oh i thought he had it i thought he had the perfect turnover angle it was arguably a little high so it got caught up in there but still very smart play keeping it low yeah, still He's... catching one of those middle trees leaving about halfway up the fairway. Just a little outside of circle two, just gonna pitch that up. This is another one of those dangerous greens. It, it looks fairly flat on coverage, but as you play it, if your disc doesn't land flat, it has a potential to run away down the hill. Yeah, and run away it will. This hole also really baits you into trying those long putts because it slopes down the whole way. You feel like you can just float it the whole way to the basket with no issues. That's unfortunate. Sailed over the basket, hit the big tree right there, and rolled all the way back to Circle's Edge. The basket has not been kind to him today. It hasn't really been kind to a good many people. Rod from about a pace outside of the bullseye sneaks that in there. Connor gonna try that putt again. Oh no. Yeah, even when editing this, I had to rewind it because I forgot it happened. It, I thought for sure it was in. Us in real time, we thought for sure that was in. Jackson a little much on the comeback, but yeah, just absolute unfortunate spit out there. Katana. That was every bit of dead centered. And we seen we seen something similar during round one with Mike Butcher. Uh, it's just, that basket doesn't seem to be very kind. But let's move past it and get over to hole 13. Evan, tell us about 13. Hole 13 has a wonderful tree right in the middle of the fairway, about 50 <laughs> feet off of the tee, 
which just begs you to hit it. Uh, the, the play is really to throw a hyzer shot right around the right side and just hold that hyzer line all the way around to the top of the hill. But uh, right in here in this landing zone, is somewhere right in here where the camera is, is a perfect shot to, to land. If you can get the skip and roll down the hill to give you a little closer bid to the hole, that would be great. Um, this basket that you're seeing here isn't where we're going to be playing to. Uh, again, this is a temporary pin placement for the tournament. So that basket is actually moved back here where you see the mini basket now. And it's actually going to be elevated. So... Uh, this was a par 5 last year, and seeing just a few too many eagles uh, to still be considered a par 5 um, plays pretty well as a pretty difficult par 4. Early release. Looked like he just slipped out of his hand before he was ready. You said going to the right of that tree is a good play. Uh, another good one is something that flies a little straighter but dumps a little harder to the inside, something kind of like what Rod just threw there. Did you do it again? I think I got further. <laughs> I just now hit the ground. Didn't touch a thing. And you heard Evan right there say it just hit the ground. It's such a clean flight through there. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you can hit that, you're you're gonna put yourself in a great spot. Uh, very tricky for the forehand player here. That's going to come down on a little too much edge. I think he's going to kick right. And I think he, he knows. There's not a lot he can do off the tee there except just try to get up to the corner, put himself in position to try to play for par. Right off the center tree, the one that you said was begging to be hit. <laughs> Jackson grants its wish, and he's going to get kicked over to the right a little bit. See if Evan can dig himself out of this early hole. Take a shot. That should at least give him a look down uh, to be able to approach the basket. Yeah, might be able to save his par from from that shot. It's really good, depending on if he kicked any further left or if he skipped further left, rather. Yeah, so he did skip a little left over by that holly tree, uh, so he's gonna have a look, but the angle is gonna be a little off. going to try to play it in the inside. Didn't hit anything. I heard the late tree kick there. Jackson having to go back to the forehand roller well for his third shot. And this is that situation now where, you know, you're going to start giving some of those strokes back to the course that you worked really hard to get. Jackson's still by the short pin throwing his par shot. And Another tree. Catching something early. Let's it hang just a little wide. I think the correction there for that shot is throwing it a little lower, a lot lower, and aiming for the ground play. Trying to get that little skip just to give yourself a little better putt instead of airing it the whole way to the basket. Very good putt. Absolutely. Good few feet outside of circle one for that one. Just jams it in there, and he knows if he misses that, He's got another circle two putt coming back. And that was Jackson's bogey bid, I do believe. We'll see in a second. But... Rod cleans up short putt there. That will take us to the number one handicap on the course. Hole 14, 487 foot par four, coming in at nearly a stroke and a half over par. Uh, this is, it is the hardest hole on this layout. 
Uh, it is traditionally two separate holes that are combined for the tournament. Um, flying straight down this fairway is about your only option. And then sailing over this creek. If you can get over the creek in one, you're going to set yourself up for the ideal birdie chance with a flex forehand that's going to start moving to the left before entering this bottleneck and then filtering back down the hill a little to the right, basically circumventing and going around this last clump of trees. If you lay up short of the creek from the tee, uh, you're going to set yourself up in a position to be able to throw over uh, to the traditional hole 14's tee pad and then playing this hole for par. Uh, if you don't feel confident clearing the creek in one, playing for par is the smart play here. Otherwise, you can get yourself into trouble because this is a very tight fairway to hit. It is a narrow hallway down through there. It is hittable. It is doable. But it is. this is another one of those that were set up and created to be a championship caliber hole. Evan going with that Huck Lab disc again. I can't quite remember what it is. Just a better kick. <laughs> now, did this hole play a little easier day two? It looks like it did. Um, so it actually played about a tenth of a stroke easier day two. So people did kind of figure it out, but it's still playing pretty well over par. Connor thought he pured it. Caught one of the last trees. Jackson stepping up here. He's got a high-speed driver of some sort. I think it might be an Emperor. I'm probably way off on that. Beautiful shot. Oh, oh yeah. crap. Just hit the ground. I'd say that one cleared the creek. By a long shot. <laughs> He hit the gap. Actually, he didn't really hit the gap. He hit just he hit the right hand gap. Um, so there is a the main gap that you see in the center of the frame. There is a smaller gap just to the right of it that you can hit, and he hit that one with a flip up driver that just rode laser straight the whole way. Yeah, you can see the the little tree wall there. Uh, that we have set up. That's either side of a creek, a uh, little ravine there in between the two. That is uh, not OB, just unfortunate hazard. Yeah. Actually, uh, the way that it was laid out in the rules is that is just casual relief because it is so treacherous with footing trying to get down in there and throw from out of there. So you could take relief straight back from that if you did end up in there. Now, Evan finding traditional hole 14's tee pad. Uh, it's about, a, what, 150 foot from that tee pad, I do believe, is what that hole measures. I know it's not very long, but it's a very difficult hole. Yeah, it's still very tight. It's more... Again, uh, about 25 feet off of the tee, <laughs> there is a tree in the middle of the fairway. Great forehand chip shot to get over everything and then back down to give himself a look. Evan, searching through the bag of tricks, he's going to pull a grenade out. Gets up and over that wall of trees. Now this is that, like I said, this is that big bunker of trees that the fairway forces you to move left and then around. Kind of funnels you into that bottleneck and we finally get to Jackson's drive. He is inside circle two. And not far from, not far from circle one, and nearly <laughs> hits an eagle the eagle on this putt. hole would have been absolutely yeah that phenomenal. that would break the hole. Uh, it was insane watching it. Uh, it was crazy. Arguably, he didn't have that much of a a clean look at the basket, but he had a look enough to actually put it and hit the basket. Well, I mean, this stroke, this hole did finish uh, five point three. Uh, strokes on average. Yeah, so the field averaged worse than bogey here, but 
Jackson showing why he's leading the field. That was, that was an ugly miss there. Unfortunately, looks like he just kind of pulled it out of the hand a little bit. And again, this is one of those greens that's just a hillside Super green. Super sloped. And again, the way that the, the fairway aims you, it slopes away. So if you air past the basket, you're just going to keep floating. A lot of these fairways don't feed you into the hillside, it feeds you with the hillside. So that's a big degree of difficulty that you've got to try to take into consideration there. I have landed by this basket before and rolled all the way to 15's tee box. Same. Same. So Jackson, after the insane eagle look, turns the birdie up. Only birdie of the day. Just... He he drew the plan up on how that <laughs> needed to be done. It was insane. But, all right, we'll move on to hole 15. 279 foot, and this also has a new pin placement. Traditionally, it's straight in front of you on the left-hand side of this path. Uh, now it is tucked a little deeper and up onto the right on the bank. Yeah, before you would want to throw something that's... Uh either super soft that's going to land flat uh, and and slide about 20 to 30 feet down to the hole right there in the middle of the fairway. Now you almost are forced into a, uh, a forehand shot if you want to get a chance at the basket to, to go up on that high side on the right there where you see that basket placement. Yeah, 100%. This is not very backhand friendly. This is one of the kind of the more opposite feeling holes where you have to have a good forehand in order to do this, so. I expect Connor to feast on this hole. Oh, no. Get lucky. Call him for it to get lucky. Gets lucky. He feeds through. Be a call, Traditionally, a, an overstable approach disc, or even a fairway. I, I throw a Firebird here, because I know I can control it and count on it just diving to the right. But if you see those streamers in the tree, that's pin high. That's where the basket is. A little bit of an anti-skip there. It's kind of unfortunate. He'll have to come back up the hill towards the basket. But good thing he did stay in the path though. So early. Someone aced one. Yeah, guarantee it. If you hear the roar, if you hear the roar right whenever Rod hit the tree. That indeed was an ace on hole 21. It was the island hole. Cody Bruce ended up ringing that one up, and we could hear it all the way up on the hill. It was insane. It was so loud that we all immediately knew what it was. There was no question about it. That No other ace would have gotten that much of a reaction. We've been begging for that for multiple years, and it finally happened. Unfortunately, did not get on camera. And as you saw that approach there, that's the danger of hitting anywhere on the hillside with this hole is is the roll away. And I don't know if he actually jumped over the hill to the left or if he stayed in the road. I think he stayed up. But that is such a dangerous, uh, dangerous kick on this hole. Splashed in and splashed right back out. That's his second one today, to eat all those chains and still get spit back out. Yeah, yeah, he was fortunate to be right on the edge of the hill instead of rolling over. Yep. Circle's edge putt here for Connor. He was lucky to move a little deep, so he actually got himself on the other side of those trees to have a clean putt. Just sneaks it up and in, and that's a rare birdie on this hole. One of only two on the day. Now that we know the other one doesn't come from this card, Mike Butcher was able to pick it up from the chase card. And he is actively chasing again. Kind of like so many others in that position, though, that you know the lead or second place is just a little out of reach right now just because of the pace that Connor and Jackson are setting, but, you know, kind of that good still getting in the podium, 
is still attainable for a handful of these guys, and chase card is chasing. Got some cleanups here before we start moving down toward hole 16. You can kind of see how steep the greens are as you watch the, yeah. watch Evan walk off the green there. Little tiptoes. I think the, the camera made that green look just a little steeper than what it actually <laughs> is, but it's still, it, it's no slouch. Neither is this one. Hole 16 coming in just a touch shy of 200 feet. Uh, averaged a touch over par. Uh, this 197 foot par 3 is a straight shot down the hill with a baby fade back toward the basket. Now, now that's not the only line to this basket. That is true. That is true. There's also a forehand or backhand turnover up to the left that was cleared out recently. It used to just be a local route uh, that kind of you had to be really precise and know what you were doing to hit that shot. Uh, and typically the only people that would try it were the people that played there on a daily basis. Um, but it did end up getting cleared out. It makes it, uh, kind of gives you a new look at the hole. Connor going to show that to us right now. He's going to keep working down and, uh, get fed down pretty well. I would say the, uh, the average being a little high on this hole is from, uh, rollaways. 100%. Unfortunately. And trees. Yep, that'll do it. <laughs> Jackson now going to have a very difficult shot to get up and down for his par. The shot and the line not so much difficult. It's going to be landing it where it needs to without sailing super long. Evan taking the traditional route. The difficulty with taking that low route is there's a very, very large tree down there that prevents the skip shot unless you skip a little early to get high enough to jump over it. Urban legend, though, is that the only way to ace this hole is actually skipping off of the log. Maybe that's why I haven't aced it. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I don't know just how well I believe that story, but as the story goes, if you skip off the log, you'll ace it. So There's that difficult shot I was talking about for Jackson. It's not so much the line. You can get down there fairly well. Uh, it's, it's getting the disc to land because, as you can see, it goes way downhill. And this vibe right here from this upper side of the fairway really reminds me of, like, Pacific Northwest. Up in that area with some of the old growth forests and stuff. Really super picturesque. I, it's my favorite thing about this course is just how nice, secluded, out in nature it is. You get some beautiful scenery. So. And Connor was fortunate to get that just to stop right by the hole. Rod really trying to get that up in there. Tick with some chains, but not enough to slow it down. It's going to sail pretty long past. Who's this we got down here? Evan? Looks like. I think that was Evan and his roach getting up there. Rod's come back from about 22. Well, sink that straight in. Jackson saving the par after that early tree kick. There were two birdies on the day again. Mr. Mike Butcher continuing that push from the chase card and Andrew Hood. And if something looks a little weird on this hole, it's the astounding lack of trees. <laughs> this... Hole is finally getting back out in the open where we will remain for the rest of the round. However, just because there's no trees doesn't mean this hole is without danger. There's an OB line that stretches all the way up the right-hand side as well as the left. All of that tall grass is OB, and the line wraps really tightly down around the green here, including down by the creek, which sits, what, 20, 25 feet south of the basket? I would say right at Circle's Edge is the edge of the creek. Yeah. So, there is, while there aren't as many things to hit in the fairway, uh, there's also significantly less inbounds land 
to hit as well. Yeah, this just is, because it looks open doesn't mean there's doesn't no Doesn't mean landing, there's so. no danger. It, there's definitely still some danger. Connor with a very smart, safe forehand. He gets a ton of distance on that, but that grass line is way out there. And Jackson never giving this a chance to be OB. He gets so much height and angle on that, it has no choice but to fade all the way back. Super safe, taking the OB out of play, even though he threw over OB pretty well the entire time. So that angle, the stability of the disc, it never had a choice. It was going to fade back. That's the mistake right there. So you can see those flags in that line on the right. That's the OB line, and he's not going to progress very far forward. So he's going to be facing probably 400 feet into the green with a very tricky green just to save his bar. I think the wind's a bit tricky on this hole too because you can have a, a headwind wrapping around that building and you don't know it until the disc gets about 100 feet in the air. Yeah. This is the opposite wind because you're facing the opposite direction as hole one. Right now you're actually pointed back toward the beginning of the course. So as the wind funnels down, it's typically a tailwind uh, kind of switches between a left to right to right to left tailwind depending on the day, but it's generally a predominant tailwind. But like you said, over toward that one side, sometimes it swirls back and around. The wind does some weird things down in this valley, and that's also tracking OB. He did go inbounds and flew inbounds for a majority of it, but it looked like he dove in just a little before the green. It He's looked gonna... like he was probably about 20 feet back from the edge of the hill when it turned in. That's going to bring that OB back in the play. And that's got to travel forward. I think he followed uh, Evan's Vapor Trails again. I think they're both going to be out about the same place for the second time in a row. And this placement right here, middle of the fairway, right as it bottlenecks down, this is an absolutely perfect shot. Yeah. Without getting super aggressive and bringing a lot of OB in the play off the tee and trying to actually get up into that bottleneck, this is about as good as you can do. Plays a beautiful backhand turnover. Buttery smooth. Gets it down there. He's going to have a putt. Connor with that overstable approach disc again. I want to think that that's like a harp or something, but I'm not sure. It's very harp zone-ish. Unfortunately, it just doesn't have the glide to get down there. He gave it a bid, for sure. Absolutely. He was trying everything to save the bogey, but unfortunately, he was OB dipping in a little early. And it looks like Evan's going to be in the same boat. consulting with his card mates, trying to figure out exactly where he crossed that line. They're going to give him a spot right around shallow circle three. It's probably about 70 feet out. Now, do you run that in that situation? I mean, just taking into consideration he's seven over par, he's slipped down the leaderboard, he's not threatening the lead or anything... It's kind well, of you, middle of the You know pack. what I'm going to throw on that shot. Uh, I know you're going to throw your Dillo. I'm going to throw Victor one Dillo and drop it right in front of the basket. <laughs> I don't know. Do you get baited into trying to run it from 70 feet, knowing that there's OB behind the basket again, just to save the bogey? Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd have a hard time, but I would probably lay that one up. Unless I absolutely have to for the win, I'm not running that. So Jackson taking the easy birdie. Connor with the unfortunate par there. This came in as a 4.5 average, which I think only is that high because it's a straightforward hole. I think it's only that high because of the OB. And two birdies on the day. 
Uh, one from Jackson Kemper and one from Colin Docterman. Really surprising. Really thought we'd see more. As we head to uh, hole 18 here, this hole actually played is the fourth easiest hole. Um, I think because the OBs were relaxed on this hole a little bit. Yeah, definitely. You still have to worry about some OB here. Uh, if you find the road pretty long or on top of that building to the left uh, or in the creek to the right, you're OB, but it doesn't really come into play off the tee very much, especially all of our guys here in MA1. They're not bringing that building in the play. So, Stockheiser, about 300 feet to the, the first opening where that short pin is, is about uh, the best landing zone you're going to get on this shot. No, absolutely. And from that position at the short, you're going to really give yourself the best opportunity to get into this basket because you're going to have a look at three different windows to actually make it in. Yeah, you've got the, the backhand hyzer approach, uh, which is the one I like to throw yeah. with my walker. You'll have a straight shot right at it and, and a forehand skipper if you want to go all the way. Look at that. Yep. So there's a lot of times where I say, yeah, that probably would have, like, I had to park the short pin or I had to ace the short pin. That legitimately would have aced the short pin. It flew directly over top of that place marker about four foot off the ground. And there's your stock hyzer, and that should put him right in front of that short pin. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be more in line with the backhand, and Jackson's going to be more in line with the forehand gaps, uh, respectively. But i say if they could... If they would switch, they'd probably be okay with it. Just and anytime because... you get off to the right there in those trees, that is jail. Oh, absolutely. That is, you are not in a good place over there. You're forced almost every time to just pitch back out to the fairway, knowing that birdie is now completely out of the question. And even par is a long shot from there. So you heard Connor talking there. Whenever Evan got in there, he actually skipped off of a branch and got shot way forward. So I actually missed uh, Rod's second shot out, uh, and you couldn't really see Evan's shot out either. So... My apologies there, but it's it's tough filming back into that. So we'll get back over to Connor here, who tries to play the flex forehand around. The problem with going around that end is it's going to carry deep. Uh, yeah. it, it doesn't have a chance to cut in before you get to the basket. Yeah, so you're pretty well going to leave yourself with that near circle's edge putt on the backside and even bring that OB into creek play. into play. Yeah, the creek uh, directly behind the basket to the left is is actually way closer than you think it is when you're throwing your approach shot. Oh, absolutely. And Evan there with the best look at the straight gap. And this is a cheat code. Oh, uh, That's unfortunate. Uh, there's a little bit of a branch that kind of hangs out right there that knocked him down. But he he was up there. Nearly pushing to the road. Actually just a little too far to make a good approach on the basket. Yeah. And he had a couple of different gaps and he opted for the straight one. Uh, but that jump putt brings so much height. So you have to have it high. So it's going to bring that stuff up high in the play. Yeah. Canopy is everywhere on this course. He does make the correction from round one, though, however, and puts himself in a position to still pick up the birdie. This is a mistake round one, is he had an equally impressive tee shot. He was nearly in the road, uh, but he just didn't put himself in a position with his second shot to pick up the easy birdie. So we've got some other cleanups here, and we will move over to the three feature holes on the course in the tournament layout. So holes 19, 20, and 21 are not normally playable. They are temporary holes just for exclusively this tournament. Uh, 
So they are a huge feature to have. Crowd favorites. Everyone loves them. Uh, we'll start off with 19. Now, though the drone is flying the right gap, you do have the choice basically between the right or the left of this big sycamore here. Uh, it was just a little easier to fly this gap. Um, the right gap certainly takes those uh, fir trees out of play there on the left. Oh, absolutely. Um, the angle's not the absolute best to try to get, but if you go left side, you can either throw a backhand straight at it or you can throw a big skipping forehand. Now, due to some recent flooding earlier in the year, this fairway is now covered in small stones, so you might not get the skip you want, but <laughs> you can at least count on a little bit of ground play. Now, right there is that gap that you're going to want to hit for the forehand line. We'll see Jackson... Or the backhand turnover. Trying the backhand turnover, overcooks it a little, and you can see it way up there. On the bank, going up to 21's basket, he is OB long. Ends up turning that over into an unintentional roller. And, uh, or maybe he might have been aiming for the roller. I'm not sure. Hoping the signs would stop it before it would go yeah, OB. Left it a little too straight, didn't get it flipped over. Connor. Well, well executed for you. Very well executed. Aim at that barbarian sign. Let the fade of the disc and the ground play get you back over to the basket. And Danger. almost seems like a couple of those uh, sycamore branches probably could have been trimmed up a little higher, but that's all right. We had a fantastic grounds crew out taking care of the course before. Oh, oh no. no. I thought for sure that was going to skip on up. He hits right on the line. And any time you do that other than that one, it's going to continue to skip forward. I think he clipped a rock, which bounced him backwards into the creek. So both he and Evan are going to proceed to the drop zone. It's kind of mid-circle two here, giving you a look at it. Now those, that sign wall is not out of bounds. Ooh, almost saves it. I think an inch higher, and that's in. Oh, cabbage again. Yeah, he, he wasn't in a great spot, even, you know, with that. Where he went out of bounds, he had that tree right in between him and the basket. Connor, front of the basket. He's not happy about it. Only player on our card to get inside C1 and would have joined only one other birdie. Ethan Burt was able to pick it up. Here a little bit of cheering. We are right over near hole 21 where people are finishing their rounds. Jackson cleans up his bogey. Same with Evan and Rod. Connor not happy about it, but he's actually going to pick up a stroke on the card. And this hole actually played harder day two than what it did day one, surprisingly. I think people were just trying to get a little more aggressive day two. I, I think so, especially coming down the stretch. Speaking of which... Hole fraught with danger. Hole 20. 316 and uphill. Uh, you're going to be throwing right through this gap. However, the road up to the right, as well as that tree line long, are out of bounds. Uh, the water down to the left is OB, and anything on the beach in the sand is hazard. So you play it where it lies, still incurring that one-stroke penalty. Uh, but up at the basket... You are 20 foot away from OB on two different sides. And any of those trees can kick you all the way into the lake from experience. It's a very good forehand hole if you can stay away from the road uh, up above the basket. Yeah, it's like that's perfectly placed. A little short, it's going to have a longer putt. Really good placement otherwise. 
danger with backhand here is anytime you come on that uh, that cut edge, it's going to want to roll down the hill uh, towards the hazard. Good kick, though. Kick to the right and set it down to the left. The other big disadvantage with backhand is if you stall it and fade it, you're again matching the slope of the hillside the whole way. So you're just going to float with it and float even further left like this. And I've seen so many people get brought all the way down to the lake. By the way, that lake in January is very, very cold when you have to swim for a disc. I can only imagine. <laughs> this is textbook right here. Perfect backhand turnover. Gets up inside the circle. Mama Kemper there. Walking with us, watching her son. We'll get up. He was actually a little quick on the draw there. I wasn't 100% ready, so... Pardon the shaky... The shakiness as we get started. He pitches up. It's going to take us par. That one was in danger of uh, going OB, OB long, long there. OB long, it really was. Connor from just outside the circle with that forehand. It's an odd miss for him. A little low left. And you can see the line right there at the tree line. Uh, there is OB Long behind this basket if you do get a nasty roll. Yeah, like I said, you're about 20 foot away from OB on two different sides. Rod, unfortunately, unable to convert from the excellent drive. So another surprising stat, no birdies on this hole for the day. Which is crazy. When I was designing this hole, it was one of the ones that like, I personally feast on this hole, just with my play style. It's typically a backhand turnover MD3 the whole way up. And I'm just kind of surprised not to see more people getting up there and, and getting this hole. I'd say... I'm about 25% on getting in circle one with this hole from the drive. Yeah. Alright, the big finale, hole 21. Everything comes down to this. Uh, we do have a little bit of a chase going on for first place, but some big things are going to have to happen for it to swing. Uh, any drama whatsoever, Jackson pretty well has this thing locked down. But... Anything is possible here. Five, six can come into play really easy. Go in the water. Don't land the the island perfectly, which is the exact dimensions of circle one. Uh, even at only 232 feet and playing significantly downhill, you're trying to land on a postage stamp. And if you don't, you proceed to a drop zone, which aims you right back at the water. If you miss it, you're going back in the water. You know, we've seen it happen before. We watched it happen the Jackson round one. So, and what we were talking about earlier about how the wind comes down that uh, that channel through that valley, mm -hmm. you get a, a really strong left to right wind here that really wants to carry you mm -hmm. uh, into that water exactly. to the right. Not to mention any swirling winds coming off the lake to the right. Oh. Connor playing oh. a great forehand, lands yeah. it right in I'll front of aces. that raised basket, trickles just to the side of it. Here's Zach down there by the basket. He was excited. Jackson, let's see if he can correct from his mistakes round one. There we go. You see the green flag in the background. He is good and safe. Now, I believe this is that Glowberg from Evan again. Interesting dish choice. I don't know if he counted on it getting more flip, but that's a Berg flight. Just drops right out of the air and unfortunate. Just about a foot short. You get ready to see something weird. I love the high hyzer line on this hole because it's so dramatic. <laughs> Again, you heard Zach Carr down there. He was real excited. He's been wanting to watch somebody throw the Spike Heiser line for the entire tournament and finally got his wish on the very last person to do it. 
Evan from the drop zone. Like I said, that's that's a 50 foot putt on a raised basket aimed straight back at the water. You miss that, your OB putting five. From 50 feet again. No, or no. Or do you have to throw no. from water's edge at that point? From there, you just go where it crosses. Drop zone is only from the tee. I think this basket is just Jackson's nemesis. And you heard up on the tee that Connor was talking about he had to try to ace it to even give himself a chance. Uh, unfortunately, he was just short. Rod sneaking it in there. Uh, bringing him back down to six over par. Um, Connor uh, popping the jump shot there to bring him back to five under. Jackson going to tap out for seven under par. Excellent round here. Do believe a four under total, which ended up equating out to a 984 rated. Connor only one stroke behind him coming in at 976. And yeah, we seen you there. <laughs> And we've got the Turtles making their return here. Uh, they missed out. They were on vacation or had the day off for the for the front half coverage. But they are back to, to round us out as we go over our back half scores. And like I said, this back half is where the course showed its teeth. There's a lot more red on those scorecards uh, now than there was in the first half. Oh, absolutely. Even a lot of that purple thrown in. It's pretty color, but I don't like seeing it. We'll take a look at our final leaderboard here. Jackson sealing up the win at seven under par. Connor is trying to give chase the whole time, and he definitely, uh, you know, gave it his best effort. Coming in just a couple strokes short at five under, and then they had the top two spots completely locked down with 11 strokes between second and third. With so. uh, two people from the chase card. You had Andrew Hood and uh, Mike Butcher mm -hmm. uh, tied for third at six over. Yep. And then Rod, also on the lead card. Rounding out that trio on the uh, third place tie. So all in all, it was a, a great tournament. It was uh, awesome to get out and get this thing filmed and get it up on the air for everyone to see. Uh, it was awesome getting to watch Jackson go out and play. Absolutely fantastic young player. He's got a super bright future. So, again, for CRDG Productions, I'm Christian. I'm Evan. We'll see you guys around.